welcome to my YouTube video. In this video I'm going to demonstrate several methods for changing yarns in the middle of a row. When you have to change from a new skein, from an old skein to a new skein, you need to add on more yarn and do it in the middle of the row invisibly. These are with weaving in methods and this is with a spit splice method and I'm going to show you all of these methods in this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up uh, if you enjoy what I'm teaching you. So here we have a little swatch where the yarn is ending and we need to start a new yarn. It could be the end of the skein, the start of the next skein. And we're going to do this in the middle of a row. You can do this in the round to it, it's exactly the same. So I just drop the old color, I pick up the new color, and if you're a continental knitter, you can put it in your hand and secure it down with this finger right here. Here's the tail. Or if you're a thrower, same thing. You can still secure it down with this hand and put it in this hand to tension it so that you have some tension, something holding this tail. Let me do it again. Here's the tail of the new yarn. I put it in my hand as if I'm going to knit if I'm a continental knitter. Let me make this bigger. Put it in my hand as if I'm in a knit, and then I use these fingers, I clamp it down to the needle right here. Here's the tail of the new yarn right here. Okay, so I'm that way I can get some tension going here, and then I just continue knitting. If I am a thrower, I still hold the tension there with that finger and my thumb, but now I'm going to tension it in my right hand, and I'll start knitting like this. pull the first stitch through. Okay? I'm a continental knitter so I'm going to put it in this hand. And then and that stitch is going to be loose because there's nothing holding it. And then you just continue knitting. Just make sure the rest of your stitches are the normal size. Now what you end up with is, of course, there's the hole there because this strand and this strand are not connected. Let's look at the other side. We have the two tails here and here, and we can see we can there's the hole, there's the gap, they're not connected. Now if that hole bothers you, you could loosely tie these in a knot. I would just do it one time, like this, just once. That'll keep a hole from forming as you're knitting. But I just leave it open and I'll show you how I do the next row. So we're going to work back the following row, which is a wrong side row if you're working flat. If it's a uh, in the round, it'll be a right side row. We'll just work back. And when we get to where those two yarns are separated there, it will be loose. And that may bother you. If it bothers you, then you'll want to use the little technique of just lapping them over each other, tying it one time, not in a knot. Here we come to the opening. And this stitch will get loose here. This stitch is going to get loose because there's nothing holding it. But we don't want the stitch on the needle to get loose, so we're just going to Purl through that, or knit if you're on a right side row. Make sure your tension is good on your current stitch, not the row below. Don't worry about that. The current stitch should have good tension. Same thing. This one will be loose too. Both sides where the yarns are free will be loose. But just keep the tension good, no tighter or looser than normal, on the next row. Okay, so let's take a look at this. There's that hole. Now the stitch, the current stitches on the needle are all the same tension. You can see they're all the same, but where it's loose is the row below. So we can look at the wrong side. And you can see that those two purl stitches are big. They're knits on the right side, purls on the wrong side. It's this stitch right here. Here's the head of it. Here's the other stitch. Here's the head of it. So all you have to do is pull this down a little bit, pull this down a little bit, till they're the same size. 
and we'll weave in the ends. I'll show you how to weave in, in the ends in a second. But before I do that, I also want to show you how to spit splice. So we're going to do that next. Okay, so this is going to be an example of how to splice two pieces of yarn together. It's called a spit splice, although I don't use spit. What you're going to be doing is actually felting these two ends together so that you can just continue knitting and wherever they happen to hit in your knitting is where it will overlap. So let me increase the size here and let me show you how I prepare for this. So in preparing the yarn the first thing I want to do is to break it. This is a cut end here and you can see that it's just a blunt cut and that is not going to be easy to felt together. It won't make a nice smooth felt. So the first thing I do is I break the yarn. I don't want to cut it and I just put my hands six or eight inches apart and pull the yarn apart. Can you see the difference? So this is an, a cut end. This is a torn end and I want it torn or broken like that. And then I'm going to open up the strands. This is a four ply and you can see it did pretty good actually it pulled a couple of the plies off already when I broke it and that's exactly what I want. If it didn't, if that had broken where they were all about the same length, then you want to tear off a couple of the plies and I'll show you that on the other end. So I'm going to tear this one. This is the other end that we're going to join because I want it rough also. And it pretty much they all broke at the same length. So what I want to do is separate the plies. This happens to be a four ply yarn. And I want to pull off two of the plies. I want to pull off a couple of inches of each one of those plies. So I'm just going to pull on it. See it just slides right out very easily. Make all this yarn smooth. And I'm going to take out a second one. Let's also take this one off. And I'm just pulling on it and it will come out. It'll just slide right out. So now I have smooth the yarn out. I have this fuzzy torn in which matches the one coming from my swatch. So this is going to the new ball of yarn. This is from the old ball. And what I'm going to do is put them in my hand. I want to overlap the ends so that the fuzzy part is going on to the four ply section on both ends. And then I'm going to put it in my hand and you want your hands to be clean to do this. It does not require moisture. In order to felt something you need two of three things. In order to felt you need friction, heat, and moisture. You need two of those things. I'm going to provide friction and heat because when I apply friction it's going to also heat up. So that's two of the three things. You could spit on it also but I don't find that to be necessary. So I'm just going to take my hands, they're clean hands, and I'm rubbing my palms together vigorously to create heat. And you can feel when it gets hot. And it has felted together a little bit. A little bit unevenness there. We can work on that section a little bit more. There you go. Now you could pull this apart, but it will hold together long enough to knit it. So that's what we're going to do. Let me show you how this looks. So here is the section right here, and I'm going to go ahead and knit it into this piece. You can see I did it about uh, six or eight inches from where I'm actually working. That gives you a uh, space to do the splice. If you try to do it up too close to your needle, uh, it's hard because there's just not enough space to work. So when you notice that you're coming to the end of a strand of yarn and you're going to have to add a second one, leave yourself some space to work. Okay, let's see where it is. We're probably coming up on it. Here it is right here. Let's move this out of the way. You can see there's the splice a little bit uneven there but that is not going to show. Now the reason I removed some of the plies is because you want it to stay the same thickness. If you don't remove any of the plies it'll be double thick in that area and it will show on the front of your work. By doing it this way here it comes. Can you see it coming up over my finger here? There comes the splice 
By doing it this way, it literally will not show on the front of the work. It's virtually invisible. And we're going to be comparing this to just weaving in the ends. You can't always splice, though. Not all yarns splice. I'd go ahead and try it on just a strand of your yarn and see if it works for you. I have been able to splice acrylic yarn. You just have to be very careful when you're working out to not pull it apart. Once it's in the knitting, once you've passed that splice, which we have, I'm working the return row now, so we can take a look at it. Once you've passed the splice, it's not going to come out of your work. Especially if it's a natural fiber. When you go to block it, the blocking really secures it in place. We just worked across the splice and now we're going to take a look at it. Let's look really close. So you cannot tell where it is. It's a bird. Another method that people like to use for starting a new uh, skein in the middle of a row is to just overlap the two yarns together and knit with both of them for several stitches. So let's try that. I have this tail here. I'm going to connect this one to it so that they're right next to each other. And I'm just going to, here's the green tail over here. The white tail is coming off my fingers. So I'm just going to knit with both yarns at the same time for four stitches. Whoops. And then drop the white yarn and just knit with the new yarn which happens to be green in this case because I just want to demonstrate how this is going to look and then we'll knit the return row now what you need to be careful on the return row whether it's the right side or the wrong side is that each one of those stitches that where you overlap the yarn it's going to look like two stitches so you have to be careful and knit them together as one stitch so here's the first one here. See, it look, it could look like two stitches, especially if they were the same color, which most likely they will be. So you just want to make sure that you treat those as one stitch. You can see they're coming out of one stitch below. Both of them are coming through the same stitch. And then you just continue knitting. And we'll see what this looks like. Oops, I caught that one right there. Let me fix that. I accidentally split the stitch right here, but I'm going to fix that. Just let it come down off. There we go. And let's take a look at this. So the four stitches that we overlapped are right here. One, two, three, four. And we're going to look at those in much greater detail on another swatch and compare them with the method of weaving, just weaving in the ends on either side of the yarn join. Okay, so here we have a swatch, and I use the overlapping method for connecting the two yarns here. I just use the drop one yarn and start a second here, but in two colors, because I'm going to use that for teaching you to weave in ends. This is the same method, but just one color, and I'm going to demonstrate how to weave in ends on that too. So let's start out by weaving the ends on this one. So we're going to look at the front of the work up close and personal. We can see 
that where we dropped the old yarn and started the new yarn that those stitches are enlarged. There's loose because there's nothing holding either end. It's just a tail on the other side of the work. But the row above it looks fine. The row below it looks fine. So we're going to turn the work over and identify those two spaces. So here we have the green stitch and the white stitch that are both enlarged because they're just connected to the end of the yarn here. There's nothing, no tension being applied to them. So I'm first going to adjust their size so that they match the stitches next to them. You want them to stay this. You don't want them smaller and you don't want them larger. So just adjust them till they match the stitches on either side. That looks pretty good. But we still have our hole there, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to thread this yarn onto the tapestry needle. And what we're going to do is we're going to follow along. We're not trying to hide the jog. That's a different technique. So don't use a jogless jog technique on this. I'm just using the two colors to demonstrate where the um, join is happening and you can see which end is weaving in where. So our green yarn is coming from this direction. These stitches here. And then it's coming in right here. Do you see that? And so we want it to go in the same path as this white yarn. We want just to continue right across. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow the white yarn with our tapestry needle. And the white yarn goes up here, under here. We pull the green yarn and we make our stitch about the same size as the surrounding stitches. Not too tight and not too loose. We're going to continue following that white yarn. This is why I used the two colors so you can see it. That's one duplicate stitch. These are duplicate stitches. And you can see it's the same size. And then I'm going to follow the white yarn here and here. It's the same strand. I'm just following it. Make it the same size. And then down one more time. So we've actually duplicate stitched two stitches on the back side of the work. Looks good. Now we can trim that end, leave about an eighth of an inch, and then we're going to thread the white yarn onto our tapestry needle. And get up close. Now we're going to, our white yarn is right here, coming out right here. We know we're going to follow this green yarn here. And this it goes under here, under here, over here, like this, like a serpent. And we're going to follow it for two stitches. Again, this is duplicate stitching on the wrong side of the work. This is how I weave in all of my tails, if I don't use the splicing method. This is my first choice. Splicing is for certain yarns. I'll use it, but not this works for all yarns, no matter what the fiber content. Now, a question that people will often ask is, should you weave in ends before you block or after? I weave in the ends before I block because you know how natural fibers, once you've blocked them, they become uh, they take on the shape of the stitches, right? Like if you have to take out some stitches, you see they look like curly spaghetti. And that's what you want because that'll stay in and hold better. Whereas if you block first, then weave in the ends, the woven end in is going to be fighting the curve and is more likely to come out. And then you're going to cut this, leaving about an eighth of an inch. Let's look at the right side. It's invisible. And you can't even see the green even though I stitched it right over these white stitches and I stitched the white because it's behind. We stitched over the back of the stitch. And if you compare this to these stitches up here where we just held the yarn double, do you see how these are actually larger across here? 
This is single, double, 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 double. Those four stitches, single. See how they are bigger? They would stand out in a nice, even stockinette stitch surface. You would see it would look like a lump. Whereas down here, same thing, I'm changing colors, just like I did here. They're all exactly the same size as the surrounding stitches. Now let's go down and fill in the white hole, which is a little more difficult because you don't have that second color to guide you. But you can do it once you've learned how to read your stitches. Again, you bring the stitches down to the size that they need to be so that they're not too big and not too little. You start with one side and put it on your tapestry needle. Doesn't matter which side you do first. And you're just going to start with where the other yarn comes out and duplicate stitch two stitches. Being mindful of the tension that you pull on the yarn so you don't making your you're not tightening them up or leaving them too loose. It's better to have them too loose than too tight. But this is if you do it correctly, it's virtually invisible. Now I must warn you that once you do this, you will have a really hard time, if you need to take your work out, you'll have a hard time finding where you wove the ends in because really they are virtually invisible. Let's do the other side. And we're going to start, it's coming out here, so that means we're going to start right up here. And we're going to do two stitches again, two on each side. That makes it plenty secure. No matter what size yarn you're using, this should work fine for you. I actually enjoy doing this because it comes out so nice. Okay, so now we're going to trim this about an eighth inch long. So now, so now let's look at the other side of this. See how nice that looks? Let's turn it over. Looks perfect. You can see it a little bit there when you pull the stitches apart, but it looks pretty darn good. So now I'm going to block this swatch and come back and show you what it looks like after it's blocked. Okay, here we are post blocking. These are the stitches where we do uh, held the yarns double across the back rather than weaving in the ends. And that looks okay. The stitches are a little bit enlarged, but if that's what you like to do and you're happy with it, that looks fine. This is the same method right here, these four stitches. One, two, three, four. Weaving in the ends on the back, just stopping this yarn here, starting this one, and then weaving the ends. And you can see those stitches are the exact same size as the surrounding stitches, whereas these are enlarged. Can you see the difference? Let's zoom in. These are the four. One, two, three, four. This is where I changed colors. This is the four up here. And these are the four where there's no color change. This is a very durable method for weaving in ends. I'm pulling it as tight as the yarn will go. They will not pull out. It's very, very secure because your duplicate stitching, the stitches have the same elasticity as the surrounding stitches and there's no reason for the yarn to pull out, especially if you block it after you finish the weaving in of ends. If you enjoy my YouTube videos, and my YouTube videos, if you enjoy my YouTube videos, I would be honored if you would choose to subscribe to my channel. That's how you can thank me for giving you a video that helps you. Also give me a thumbs up, share my videos with your friends, leave a comment. I love to hear from my viewers and come back and watch some more.